bless you. My name is Azola, and you are listening to Pastor Kwame. Join me on this Monday and let's worship Jesus Christ and let's thank God for Jesus Christ because there is so much that is in Christ that is for us. And so, Father, we want to honor your name and glorify you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you for who he is to us. We thank you for what he has done for us. We thank you for what he is going to do for us. We thank you for the fact that our life is embodied in him. The supremacy of Christ, the sufficiency of Christ, the completeness of Christ, the, the, the working, the finished work of Christ. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we worship you. The Lamp of God that was slain, you are worthy to receive glory, honor, and praise. We love you, Jesus. Darling Jesus, heavenly Jesus, glorious Jesus. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, how I honor you. Come on, somebody help me worship Jesus in this place. Say he is Lord. Lord. Say he is king. Say he is mighty. Say he is glorious. Say he is beautiful. Say he is handsome. Say he is Jesus. Say he is the name above all names. Say he is the king of kings. Say he is the Lord of lords. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. What a beautiful name. Oh Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. The king of all kings. The Bible says nothing was made that was made without him. All things find its purpose and meaning in him. There is no lack. There is no poverty. In Jesus Christ, we thank you for the finished work. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The gentle Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The lover of our soul. Oh, Jesus. The friend that sticker closer than a brother. Oh, Jesus. Our soon coming king. Oh, Jesus. The judge of the world. Oh, Jesus. The king. Oh, Jesus. The Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Oh, my. Oh, my. What a beautiful name it is. The name above all names. Hallelujah. We give God the glory for Jesus. Amen. I greet you on this Monday in the invincible name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. I've, I can talk about Jesus all my life and I wouldn't finish because there's so much in Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, Father, we love you. Father, we worship you. Amen. Amen. Let me snap out of it a little bit. Hallelujah. 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 I believe that God is going to uh, take care of his own this week as well we confidently say if jesus died for us then we have no fear of death because he took that power out of death and gave us victory in the name of jesus amen amen i pray you're doing well i want to apologize i wasn't in town this weekend so i couldn't send the tree to, i mean the tree translation message but we're going to catch up next i mean this coming saturday amen let me get to work let me get to work hallelujah 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 it's a delight to bring you the word of the living god the flower face the leaves wither but the word of god are back wherever in the book of colossians chapter 3 the verse number 2 colossians chapter 3 the verse number 2 the bible says focus on things of heaven not things on earth take your camera and focus praise god fix your eyes other translation fix your eyes on things above amen focus on things of heaven not the things of earth i want to talk to you about the power that backs you the power that backs you amen and um uh, that is very important that you know the power that is backing you in life amen um it, 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 the book of colossians is is it enjoyable and Paul is an enjoyable person in general. When Paul begins to write and you like God, you enjoy what Paul is saying. Because not only is he teaching, he's an experienced teacher. Not experienced as in life experience, but he has experienced what he's teaching. He's a man that walks in the power of the Holy Spirit. So everything he says is just too rich. So in the book of Colossians, he's beginning to talk about Jesus, how he is the embodiment of everything that we believe in, and the fact that our life is actually hidden in Christ. When Jesus Christ got up from the dead on that beautiful Sunday, when he resurrected, he took our life with him, and he's sitting in heaven with our life in him praise god so stay with me on that your life is not on earth your life is in heaven all right that's the first thing i want you to understand so when christ came from the grave he brought your life with him and he went all the way 
to the heavens and then he sat down with you and already sitting in him so you are from heaven hallelujah walking on the earth so stay with me on that one now so that is where we are going today to talk about what is back in your life on earth first thing i want to say is that um in this life i'm going to make a very interesting statement in this life there are certain things only fools will see and enjoy in this life there are certain things only foolish people will enjoy it amen for example long marriage is for fools anyone anyone who is too wise will divorce each other because when you begin to think about how this person is taking advantage of me and all that you will walk out of the thing but fools stay to the end because they are not selfish hallelujah amen amen another thing that only foolish people enjoy is thinking about heaven while there's an earthly emergency when you listen to common sense common sense tells you that if heaven is enjoying life and the earth is going to trouble then thinking about the earth is more sensible about, than to think about heaven a lot of common sense people will tell you that people use heaven to cheat you on earth in other words if i want to rob you of your earthly possession i will preach you heaven so you will give me your earthly money and i will enjoy whilst you are hoping and waiting for heaven so for most people heaven is for foolish people for most common sense oriented people heaven is for foolish people the thought of heaven is not for people who wants to do anything important in this life a lot of people think that even the whole religion thing is a way for somebody to rob you of what belongs to you on earth so they can flip and switch and kind of give you a bait for you to hope for the in the near future by and by so because of that heaven has received a bad kind of reputation but only foolish people understand the power of heaven and so i want you to understand that only foolish people will see the power of heaven on earth a lot of pastors don't talk about even heaven anymore and we are thinking that thinking about heaven is not common sense but i came to speak a mystery to somebody that the power that backs you is plugged in heaven the power that controls your life is plugged in heaven the wi-fi that feed your faith is plugged in heaven the bible says when he rose from the dead he sat in heaven and he says to the Colossians church your faith and your confidence is making impact on earth because you understand the things that are preserved for you in heaven it is important and critical that you understand that the power to walk on earth come from heaven the oh god help me the confidence to walk on earth comes from the fire so paul says now i want you to understand that you cannot do this thing on earth unless you are understanding the full scope of what heaven has to offer i'm gonna take my time and teach this clear so you understand that number one your confidence in life your confidence in this life is plugged in your ability to understand what is in heaven for you. Hallelujah. Your ability to do life properly is purely determined by your understanding of what is in heaven for you. It says the Colossians church, you guys are able to be on fire for god because when we spoke you about the good news you understood that there are certain things that are stabilized in heaven for you and the, oh god help me the thought and the understanding of it gives you the confidence let me teach a little bit earthly example for heavenly purpose when you look at the currency of every country when i'm doing a transaction with somebody and i pull the dollar bill and you pull your country bill whatever country you are representing the value of my dollar is not in the paper that i'm holding but the value of my dollar is based on an invisible backing there is something that backs it that is invisible that gives the value of the dollar that you are dealing with are you hearing me 
So every time that I give you the money, your currency is made of the same paper. Probably mine is even older and, cr- and crimped. But the reason why it is valuable has nothing to do with what you're looking at. But it has everything to do is what is back in it. What is the value that is back in it? Every believer walking on earth is back fully by what heaven oh god help me what heaven has installed for that believer and when that believer understands that then he can operate and make demands on earth based on the full understanding of what heaven has already installed for that person and any christian who is very uh very sluggish any christian who is very weak any christian who is very very who is very kind of um timid and lacks the, the, the vigor to do life, I can guarantee you they have no idea what is reserved for them in heaven where Christ is sitting right now. The Bible says where he sat all authorities and powers has been sent. Oh God help me. My my God my God, my God, my God. The power to dim. Oh God help me. The power to disarm the devil. The power to disarm evil spirit. The the power to disarm negative forces is all placed under the power of Christ seated at the right hand side and those of us that understand heaven we speak from that authority and we declare in Jesus name that everything will bow at the mention of the name Jesus the power to do life comes from your understanding of what is in heaven for you the second thing that looking and focusing on heaven does the first thing that it does for you is that it influences your confidence on earth the second thing that looking onto heaven does is that it influences your faith your faith is plugged in heaven your faith is a wi-fi and the, the whole router is in heaven that feeds oh god help me that gives you what it takes that gives you the ability to move forward oh god help me faith is a substance of things of so the evidence of things not seen all those things that are not seen they are kept in heavenly places for you oh my god you cannot get married on Unless you see it in heaven, you cannot move forward unless you see it in heaven. And when you see it in heavenly places, then it becomes a reality that you must just pray into existence for the things that we are hoping for. They are coming from heaven. Your tomorrow is coming from heaven. Your blessings is coming from heaven. And until you can see it, until you can understand it, until you can perceive it. You will think your blessings come from your co-workers. You will think your blessings come from your job. You will think your... It says focus on things above. That is where Christ is sitting. And that's where your life is. Your life is in heaven, child of God. Focus on heaven. That is where your life is. And lastly, he says now, Nobody who thinks about heaven will live in sin. Hallelujah. Anybody living in sin is not thinking about heaven. And when he says heaven, he's not talking about heaven that we are going to go. He's not talking about the fact that we are going to go to heaven so I should live right. Not at all. He says that the power to live right comes from a person who are, oh Lord God Almighty. Oh Lord God Almighty. He says now, the Bible says that when Jesus rose from the dead and went to heaven, he stripped and he began to take charge and control of sin. And he stripped the power. So when you, oh Lord have mercy. When you understand this order in heaven, when you understand the hierarchy that sin has been put under the feet of Christ, then when you are walking towards sin, you understand that the, oh my, oh my. So I believe I was catching the picture now. When you understand what is in heaven, when you can see it, when it eats your mind, when it fills your heart, when it becomes the way you, you have arranged your thinking pattern, you won't let any sin have power over you because you know it doesn't. But you cannot know that unless you fix your mind on things above. Unless you understand what it means to understand above stuff, heavenly stuff. 
Let me recap it today. The power, the power, the power to be confident comes from a clear understanding of what is in heaven for you. The power to walk in faith comes from a clear understanding of what is in heaven for you. And the power to live over sin and above sin clearly comes from the picture of heaven. So the point I'm making is that if you don't know what heaven looks like on Monday, your Monday will not look good. If you don't know how heaven looks like on Tuesday for you, your Tuesday will not look good. So Paul said, fix your mind on what controls Monday, which is heaven. Fix your mind on what, oh God help me. Fix your mind on what controls Tuesday, which is heaven. So your life flows from heaven. That's why when Jesus taught them prayer, he says, now you want to say, give us this day from heaven our daily bread. Paul says, fix your mind on heaven. When your mind is heaven control, you bring heaven down to earth. May God give you heavenly vision. May God expand your will in heaven for you. And may you understand what is in store for you in heaven. In Jesus' name, I want to give you a quick, quick assignment. I want to beseech you to read Colossians chapter 1, the whole chapter. And you begin to understand exactly what God wants to share with you on today. That there is an ability, he says now, for you have this faith because you understand what is reserved in heaven for you. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.